Hello everyone. My video today will be dedicated to showing you free alternatives to popular proprietary applications. For those just getting into Linux and needing substitutes for the software you used on Windows, you can most definitely use this video for a reference. Likewise, those who use Windows but want free and better alternatives, you can use this information too. If you wish to skip to a certain category, then you can check the timestamps in the show notes. Without wasting any more time, let's begin with the video. The first category I will start with will be video editing. When you talk about software for video processing, Adobe's Premiere Pro would be the first thing that would come to mind. Premiere Pro is Adobe's timeline-based, non-linear video editing application. A wide gamut of different users exist that use it for various reasons, be it professionals or hobbyists. From people using it to make YouTube videos to people who edit videos for large legacy news media. I believe that even several blockbuster films were made using Premiere Pro. Oh, a great piece of software, the price for it is extremely high. In my country, it costs about $30 per month and around $430 per year. The commercial license is even more expensive at around $600. This is a lot to pay for a piece of software, especially over time as it becomes a recurrent expense. Most of the basic effects of Premiere Pro already exist or have similar renditions in Kaden Life. Kaden Life has support for both chroma keying and rotoscoping as well, which are a couple of the major features of Premiere Pro. To replace Premiere Pro's Lumetri, Kaden Live has its own color grading with its inbuilt color adjustment panel. Kaden Live also supports 4K, HDR, and audio ducking too. Furthermore, the fact that you can get Kaden Live for free only strengthens the reasons to use it instead of Premiere Pro. Another popular Adobe program is Photoshop. It is one of the most, if not the most, popular image editing programs available. Like Premiere Pro, though, it's incredibly expensive at $30 per month and a yearly fee of $430. GIMP or the GNU Image Manipulation Program is a good alternative to this. This is one of the most popular and polished open source applications in the world. You can do everything from photo retouching, color correction, visual effects and so on. It has the same color management control as Photoshop, along with its comprehensive plugin support. Kimp as well has functions for layers, masks, channels, brushes, and filters too. But you should note though that Gimp has a single file size limit of 32 gigabytes. This limitation does not exist in Photoshop. Apart from this condition, Gimp can do most of what Photoshop can do. And again, it can do all this for free. The next program we will be talking about is Inkscape. Inkscape is a replacement for programs like Adobe Illustration. You can install Inkscape on all operating systems, be it Linux or Windows or Mac. Both deal with creation of complex vector graphics and both of them are very capable tools for this. Illustrator, in my opinion, has more of a convoluted interface whereas Inkscape is more streamlined, making it more easier for beginners to navigate and use. Inkscape has support for most industry standard file types just like Illustrator. It works with formats such as AI, SVG and PDF2. One of the most specialized features of Illustrator is typography and text manipulation. Inkscape has support for this as well. Multi-page documents work on both too. The only real difference we will find is in the price. If you buy Illustrator, you will be paying the usual Adobe price of $30 a month, or $430 a year. Whilst Inkscape is totally free and you can download it now without paying for anything. Moving on to the next category, in 3D creation and manipulation suites. The paid program that people use is Autodesk Maya. Though it is a great piece of software, a better alternative exists and it's totally free of cost. This alternative is called Blender. It is used for creation and manipulation of 3D computer graphics. In this section though, I believe that Blender is used even more so than Autodesk Maya. They both have functions for modeling, sculpting as well as dynamic topology. Maya has excellent rendering capabilities through its inbuilt mental ray engine. While Blender has its own rendering engine compatible with OpenCL, Cuter and Intel GPU ray tracing APIs. 
Both have superb simulation as well as keyframe animations and physics representation. I could go on and on about each and every feature, but they are very close to each other in terms of functions. When we get down to the bottom line though, Maya costs about $32 a month and are around $4,000 for a one-time purchase. Blender, on the other hand, is completely free. Next, we will move on to 3D computer graphics game engines. Unreal is a very popular game engine used by a lot of game developer studios to make their programs. Though it is free to use, you have to note that they will take a 5% royalty on gross revenue and after that, it's $3,000 per product per quarter. Contrary to that, Godot is completely free. Godot has robust support for animations including keyframe animations, physics simulations and state machines. It also supports use of Blender animations as well. Unreal uses the Physics X integration for the physics engine. While Godot offers its own physics features and builds in bullet physics. Both have support for 2D and 3D audio specialization too. Godot also supports different rendering, screen pace ambient occlusion and multi-lighting techniques. If you're an indie developer just starting off and you don't wish to pay the royalties later on then you can use Godot instead. The last category is an office suite. The most popular office suite in the world is the Microsoft one. But it comes at a cost that is $12 a month or $200 for a lifetime support for the system. Whereas LibreOffice is completely free. The additional benefit of LibreOffice is that it can also open all Windows file formats. So things like docx, ppt and as well as excel files will open just fine. The Calc program is also an excellent replacement for Excel. It has all the spreadsheet capabilities with support for XLS as well as its own format ODS. It can do things like pivot tab and conditional formatting and charting too. Impress, the name LibreOffice uses for its PowerPoint replacement, can open BPTX files and supports transitions, animations and also video playback just like its Microsoft counterpart. In brief, LibreOffice can replace the entire Microsoft Office suite and it can do it for no monetary cost. If you had to use a combination of the paid programs I mentioned, either for work or personal use, then you would be paying a huge monthly fee. Juxtapose that with the free programs I mentioned and you would not have to pay for anything. This saving you a lot of money especially if you're a student or your expenses are tight. All the applications I mentioned are completely free of cost and open source. Open source software is considered to be more trustworthy and safe to use. So you don't have to worry about being scammed or viruses. If you do have some money though, you could consider contributing to the developers or people working on it. Anyway, this concludes my video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.